okay, so uh, the last presenter of the night um, is awesome. Uh, she's like the coolest lady here um, because she's my wife. You guys, thank you. I was looking for an awe. It didn't happen. Anyway, Ashley Taylor, my wife. Hello, I'm short. Uh, okay, so here we go. Um, this is what my adventures start looking like. Um, that is a glass of ginger ale on a airplane table tray. And I always get ginger ale because it started when I was really little, when I was flying, and it sounded really, really, really fancy, and now I can't not fly without it. Um, I'll also say that a lot of these pictures are not, most of these pictures are not mine, but what I tried to do was find pictures of how it looks in my head, except for one, and I'll point that out. Okay, so I'm from Houston originally. Houston, if you look, there it is on the map, and it's super cool because if you look, it's it's basically, it's bordered by Louisiana, and there's Mexico, and there's the Gulf Coast. So basically, it's the epicenter of the most amazing food in the world. It's the best place to eat. Go eat there. Um, and this is my city. When I was, I don't know, three, I was driving with my dad. Well, my dad was driving, and I was riding in the car, and apparently I saw the city on this, like, the city skyline, and I went, Teddy, Teddy, look, there's our city. And now I can't um, see the city skyline without my dad saying that to me. So, super special. I made my husband go there to get married. It's a good city. <laughs> and other cool thing about Houston is literally 50 minutes away, 5 0, not 15, that'd be cool, is this little island called Galveston. And it's actually super polluted right now, but this is how it looks in my head. <laughs> it's really pretty, and the beaches are wonderful, and the houses are Victorian. And I spent my first day, first day as a married lady there. So, that always be something to have. I know. Okay, so, fast forward. I'm 11 years old, and my parents announced we're moving to Mexico City. Yay! Yay! It's not fun to hear when you're 11. This is the one picture that doesn't look like it is in my head, because that traffic circle to an 11-year-old is the most terrifying thing in the world. It is so scary, and my parents were so freaked out, and Mexico City never really looked that pretty to me. This is the Sun Pyramid. When you are an American living in Mexico and anyone comes to visit you, you have to hike up this pyramid. I, I have hiked this pyramid I don't know how many times, and after the first couple, you're kind of over it. But it's a, it's a decent pyramid, but my favorite pyramid is coming up next. I didn't know I would have a favorite pyramid, but I do. Here we go. This is my favorite pyramid. And the cool thing about this pyramid is you have to hike through the jungle to get it at age 12. At age 12, I hiked through the jungle and got to this pyramid. And I got there, and I'm like, this looks like it could fall down in any minute. <laughs> All right, let's hike it up. And so, <laughs> so at age 12, and the humidity was awful, awful that day, and I'm from Houston. Um, but this is the view from the top. And at 12 years old, this image was is branded in my brain because you're on the top of everything, and the air is clear, and you can kind of see the ocean in the very, very back. And yeah, like I said, I was 12 when I still remember it. I looked for this picture because that's how I see it in my head. Um, other happy places. Okay, so what you see here is you see a bunch of bowls of tasty substances. What I see here is a restaurant where you get to add the things you want and not have anything you don't want. So as a picky eater at age 11, 12, this is my favorite restaurant. It's a little restaurant in Mexico called Taco Inn. It's a chain and it was my favorite place. This was my other happy place. This was my school. It's called Green Gate School. The gates are green. And if you'll notice, at the top of the screen, there's a blue sky. That's very, very Mexico. If you think the air quality is bad here, Mexico City. Um, essentially, I went to a British school, and for a nerd, it was like a paradise, because I learned more there than I learned ever anywhere else. And that was my haven. OK, fast forward. One summer, when I was 15, we went to Asia for the summer. This is Mount Fuji. This was my memory of Mount Fuji. It's kind of foggy, and I never actually saw it, but I did stand on it, so that counts, right? <laughs> and actually, my trip to Asia is kind of like this in my, in my brain. Ah, it's kind of fuzzy. I ate jellyfish. Um, summer after that, I toured with the jazz group when I was 16 um, to Europe. So we started in Amsterdam, and I got my first contact high. True story. <laughs> For six hours, and by the end of the night, I literally was saying, Why am I acting so kooky? Yeah, okay, so driving from the airport, this is how I remember Amsterdam. Um, the colors are just so incredibly vibrant, and we're driving down the freeway from the airport to the hotel, and all I could think of is, Why didn't we move here? Mexico is great, it's awesome. But I was literally, I think I wrote my mom a postcard saying, Could we have just moved to Europe? That would have been fun. Anyway, so, okay, so then we had three things, three stops planned in the Amsterdam city. We were supposed to go to the art museum and the cheese factory and the wooden shoe factory. I was mostly concerned about the cheese factory because I really like cheese. But we, all we had time for was the art museum. So I saw this 
painting live, and it's beautiful and gorgeous. And at the end of the day, all I could think about was, I really wish we'd gone to the cheese factory. And that just shows what a dumb 16 year old I was. But I did see the Rembrandt live. This is Freiburg. It's a tiny little town in Germany that had the best food in the world, and is also, bizarrely, an epicenter of really, really cool music. So I performed in this, in this town. And coming up next is a slide from the Jazz House. The Jazz House is an underground little cellar, and it's actually in a wine cellar. And it's this kick-ass concert venue that has hosted some of the greats. And I, all I could think of was I'm singing on the stage that has hosted some of my rock and jazz idols. Anyway, so if you ever are in Germany, you know, bordering France, stop by. There's probably some good music going on. Then we went to Lake Geneva and Montreux. And this is another thing where I was, I was at a jazz festival with some of the greats at the time, and I'm singing, singing overlooking this amazing lake. But I was also reading Daisy Miller by Henry James at the time, because it was from my evening English class, and that actually takes place right there. And if you ever get a chance to read a book in the city that it's written in, that's the experience. And then we went to Salzburg. We were literally there for, I don't know, 10 hours. I fell in love with the city. The music permeates every facet of it because Mozart was born there and it's also, it's where they film Sound of Music, but they don't like to talk about that. But I was really excited about that. <laughs> and if you get a chance, I, some of the most spiritual moments of my life were in that city. Speaking of spiritual moments, um, I don't really talk about this very much, but I'll just say briefly, I am a person of faith and I can say that I've prayed in every single one of these locations and I can say, with certainly for me, that God was everywhere. So it doesn't matter where I went or who I was with, I could be rooted to my culture and myself. So, and I don't think there's any other picture than this to show that I live in California now, because that's me doing tree pose on the beach. But um, I'm gonna end with just a little um, lyric from a song. If you buy me a drink later, I might actually sing it for you. But what I've learned is, I've dreamed of Eden all my life. I find it more and more each day. Now everywhere I go across the world, I stand so proudly in the sun and say I am home.